they should be the same as last time. Yay, went live. Hey. All right, let me pop out the chat. Hey guys, when am I going live? I'm live right now. <laughs> hey guys, let me know where you guys are from, what country you're in, uh, in the chat. I always love seeing that when we start. Hello from Sydney, home, me too. <laughs> Think you're awesome, love all your stuff. Thank you. Boston, Thailand, Melbourne, California. It's really cool. Canada, Melbourne, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Costa Rica. Oh, heaps of people from South America. Central. <laughs> Yay. All right, I'm gonna share the link for the live stream on Twitter and Instagram, so give me a second. Ireland, Philippines, Boston, Phoenix, Jersey, India, California, Trinidad and Tobago, Argentina, Kingston, Ont, like Ontario, Canada, Georgia, Romania, Indonesia, Edinburgh, Jamaica, Tehran, Iran. Oh, it's so cool. You guys are from everywhere. I'm Sydney, Australia, by the way. I love your videos. Can you do a tutorial on neon sign portraits? That'd be pretty cool. I haven't done too much of that stuff in Photoshop before. I've had to do it once for something. Can't remember what. Thanks so much for joining in on the stream. I'm so excited. I think the last time we did a stream was like four months ago. It was ages. All right, posting on Twitter, live on YouTube, editing uh, photos in Lightroom. So today I put together a few landscape photos that I took while I was in Colorado and Yosemite. And I really wanted to edit them again because I edited it for the video, but I really want to play around with practicing editing landscape photography. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And now let me post it on Instagram. What lens are you using now for this 24? I'm actually using my Canon 35 1.4 for this live stream. <laughs> I use that lens for everything. Um, and Dan will join us a little bit later as well, which is why there's some space here and another microphone. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Live on YouTube, editing photos in Lightroom. Swipe up to join or say hello. What time is it now where I am? It is <laughs> midday. Swipe up to say hello. Done link of course must be the Canon 35. <laughs> I would love to see a video comparison between Canon 85 and Sigma 85. I actually just did that recently and I have um, a photo shoot where I use both those lenses and also a video talking about my reviews and my thoughts about both the lenses and it's up on my channel. It's Oh, the 1.2. Yeah, sorry. I did the Canon 85 1.2 and Sigma 85 1.4. But in case you haven't seen it yet, it's up on my channel. It's the uh, photo against the purple flowers. 
and it's one of my more recent videos as well but yeah i've never tried the canon 85 1.4 i've heard it's an amazing lens the new one so hopefully i can hire it and try it out soon and make some videos all right let me make sure that posted okay cool midday sunny finally i know I was looking at the weather the other day and it looks like it's going to be rainy all of next week in Sydney, which sucks. I've been wanting to do a shoot with Christina for a while now. Maybe on Monday it's like cloudy. <laughs> just, joins what ha ugh, just joined what's happening. Today we're going to be editing some landscape photos that I took while I was in Colorado and Yosemite in Lightroom. Uh, yeah, so you guys know I'm not a landscape photographer, I'm a portrait photographer, so I really wanted to practice a little bit more with editing landscapes, so we're going to be editing without using any presets and stuff like that, and just seeing what we can do with these photos. I was just about to go watch your recent Tone Curve video, now I don't know if I'll be able to do that since you're live. Well, the Tone Curve video will always be there, so you can watch that after the live stream. What did you have for breakfast? I ended up, I ate a banana. I have mangoes because it's mango season at the moment, but I keep them in the fridge so they don't get like overripe. Um, and I need to let them out of the fridge to warm up because otherwise they hurt my teeth. <laughs> That's, yeah, I'm sure you guys wanted to know that. So, yeah, these are the photos I took while I was in Colorado and Yosemite. These were all taken on the Sony a7 III. Um, I picked just, like, a few photos for us to play around with and take a look at. And I also shot them on two different lenses, the Sony 28mm f2, which is a really tiny lens, and it's also a budget lens. And I was really impressed by the quality of it. I've had it for a few years now, but I've only ever used it to vlog. Um, I've never really done too many photo shoots with that lens, but I was really impressed with how it worked. And then I also used the Canon 35mm 1.4, which as you guys know, I love that lens. I would pay money to hear an American accent. <laughs> Can you do your best American accent? Um, I don't know. I don't want to like butcher it. <laughs> I didn't close my camera bag the other day and I threw my Sigma 35 1.4 out of my bag and it broke oh I'm really sorry to hear that that would have like physically hurt me um I remember when I was younger like when I was first getting into photography I would go to uh like free seminars and stuff like that of photographers and there was this one music photographer that I went to and he said that something that he was taught very early on is to always close your camera bag and he like you know when you ask people for like what's one tip <laughs> to keep in mind um yeah so he said to always close your camera bag even if like you're going to go back to it in like a second um, you know, sometimes like it happened to you, unfortunately, like you forget it's open or maybe someone who's there is going to like pass you your camera bag and they don't realize it's open. That's something that really stuck in my brain when I heard that. Cause I was like, I didn't even think about that. Uh, do you use Sony exclusively now or do you still use Canon as well? I use both. It just depends really, uh, like what I'm shooting and what I'm doing. So the Sony is amazing for traveling with because it's such a small lightweight camera and it's also really optimized for doing video as well, which is perfect for me to vlog on and take photos at the same time. I used to travel with the Sony a7S uh, Mark I and my Canon 5D Mark III, which was really annoying because I had like two DSLR bodies and it would just be a lot to juggle <clears throat> while I was traveling. So having the Sony a7 III is perfect for that as I can film and take photos on it. And then when I'm at home, I'm still shooting weddings majority of the time on the Canon 5D Mark IV because I have all Canon lenses. And I also do fashion photos on the Canon as well. And every once in a while, I'll do like a portrait session on the Sony. Just kind of like depends what I feel like using on the day as well. 
but yeah, I use both. I really want to get a um, a Sony 35mm lens. I think that'll be pretty good. Alright, I want to start with this photo. I took two variations of this, one with slightly less of the lake and then this one with the whole lake. I feel like I like the one with the whole lake better. Cool, and I have the information of it up there. Oh, I need to move myself down so you guys can see. Cool. Alright, so I'm going to edit this photo. The first thing I like to do is just sharpen images. It's just like force of habit. I just feel like it looks so much nicer when it's sharp, like the photo is crisp. Hi. Oh, thank you. Ah, Dan made me a coffee. <laughs> thank you. Uh, can you make a video about crop sensor frame DSLR and kit lenses and use them to take portraits? Yeah, that that is something I really really want to do. I think Because um, it's almost the end of the year. I'll probably do it early next year, but yeah, I really really want to do that Okay, I'm gonna start by doing a tone curve. I don't want it to be really like film like I want to try and make these more kind of high contrast so we'll just start playing around and see where it takes us. Uh, any reason you shut the landscape at 1.4 looks like you had shutter speed to spare to stop the lens down. Yeah, I kind of just personally prefer shooting everything at a wide aperture. It's for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first one is these are just personal photos that I take for myself to look back on in the future and to share on my blog and stuff like that. So um, if I was doing landscape photography professionally or for a job or for like a billboard or something like that, then I would definitely do it the more traditional way with a higher aperture and stuff like that. Um, but because it's just for me, I like the way 1.4 looks. It kind of gives the photos a little bit more of a dreamy feel. And I feel like also, not so much in this image, but sometimes when you've got something in the foreground, I kind of want it to be separated from the main part of the landscape. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, it doesn't uh, work this much in this photo. Like uh, something like what I mean about the foreground is that I would like this section of the image to be really sharp because that's where I want the focus to be. But then it would be cool if this bottom part here wasn't as sharp I just feel like it adds like an interesting depth to the photo and I just really like the way it looks so that's why I shoot at 1.4 I'm gonna bring the highlights down uh, why ISO 500 uh, that's the other thing when I'm traveling again because it's just for myself usually we pass through like a section and I've got my settings set for a photo I took before and sometimes just for the speed and just to take the photo I'll take a quick snap look that it's quite uh, like properly exposed and just move on um, yeah so ISO 500 doesn't really make that much of a difference, uh, especially not on the Sony a7R. You can't see like any noise in the image. It's really clean. So if I had my ISO set at like maybe 3000 or 4000, then I would have definitely brought it down to bring my shutter speed down. But yeah, sometimes convenience trumps uh, doing like changing your settings and spending a lot of time on a particular photo. Well, I feel like I like this picture looking a little cooler. I think it looked nicer than when I brought up the white balance. I think I'm also going to get rid of the lens distortion because the vignetting up here is quite dark and it's really distracting since the sky is so bright. Oh, and when I use the, um, the Canon lens on the Sony, it never registers in Lightroom, so I have to manually put it in. It's not that bad, first world problem. 
The tone curve already made it 200 times better. I can only edit on my iPad, which has no tone curve. Uh, oh yeah, and then as someone said, there is Lightroom for the iPad and for your iPhone or any phone as well. And it does have the tone curve. I find that the Lightroom app isn't that kind of user friendly. You have to really search for things to be able to find them. I think the tone curve is pretty easy to get to though. Let me double check. Makes sense. <laughs> light color. Okay. You can't really see, but when you're in a uh, Lightroom mobile app under light, there's a little button that says curve up here. And then it's got the normal tone curve and you can move it around. Yeah, the Lightroom mobile app is really good. Aside from the fact that it feels a bit clunky to use like importing images is a bit weird and um little things like that like the tools that they have to edit on the phone is amazing this is changing my photography game i love you yay okay i'm pretty happy with that so far the issue i'm seeing with this photo is that i wanted the vignetting to be gone at the top uh but in the bottom it's like now it's too bright in my opinion so I think I'm going to use a gradient to darken the bottom because I really like the lake looking really dark. It looks such a pretty blue when it's a bit darker. So I'm going to bring down the exposure. Maybe the white balance. Yeah. And contrast. No. <laughs> Just exposure. Maybe highlights to make the snow a little bit darker. That looks pretty cool. So you're 100% Sony shooter now. No, I'm not. I still use both. Um, just depending like what I need it for. Watching the works review of the EOS R this morning, I saw some images that might that make me think you might really like it. Yeah. Um, so there's a camera store that I like to hire equipment from to make videos. So I hired the Sigma 85 1.4 from them when I made this bunch of videos about it uh, a couple of months ago. And they just got in their EOS R. So I really want to hire it and play around with it because, I don't know, it's like really exciting uh, that Canon has mirrorless and everyone's doing mirrorless now. I'm excited for more Trotty vlogs. The videos and music choice was awesome. Thank you. Dan and I are going to Poland next year and we're going to Scotland as well. So we're going to be making lots of vlogs while we're there. I'm so excited. I can't wait. All right, let's bring up the saturation of yellows and oranges and the luminance as well, just to make those trees in the background like pop a little bit more. That looks pretty cool. And then I think I'm going to play around with the hue of the greens and try to make it a little bit more yellowish orange. We'll just fake the landscape into whatever I want. <laughs> so if we pull it down, it makes the greens look a little bit more yellow. And then I might pull the yellows down to make them look a little bit more orange and see what that looks like. that looks pretty cool I don't know for me sometimes I just like getting really kind of extreme with my editing I feel like it's just really fun to play around and see what is possible I feel like that looks really nice because it makes the trees pop a little bit more in the photo what do you guys reckon or maybe it was too much with the orange. We should just leave it yellow. There's too many choices. You might drop by to Ireland. Uh, we went to Ireland, uh, I think like three or four years ago, and I loved it so much. It's such a beautiful place. 
My God, what is that place? Looks like a winter wonderland. <laughs> this is in Telluride in Colorado, and it is. It's like, it looks like straight out of a fairy tale. I couldn't believe it, like, when we were there. It's this beautiful, like, quaint-looking town, and all you can see is, like, this giant mountain at the end of the town, and there were autumn trees, and it started snowing earlier than it was supposed to, and it was just so magical. We don't really get snow in Australia, so I got so excited. All right, let's see what we can do with split toning. Maybe make the highlights a little yellow. And the shadows maybe like purpley, purpley blue. Mm. Maybe nothing in the highlights. I think editing colors is always fine and yes the orange is just what I would have done. On the other hand Photoshop painting while an art form is no longer photography. Yeah I agree with that. Um, what's the proper word for doing like photo painting in Photoshop? Is it photo manipulation? Is that the word for it or is there a different term? I used to do that quite a lot when I first started photography. Um, before I even knew how to take photos, I would take stock photos from the internet and kind of just transform them into whatever I could imagine with Photoshop. Like I would take a person from one photo and put them into a landscape of another image. And I agree that's not photography. Even if you took the original photos, that's more uh, like digital art, I guess. Which, yeah, is a, definitely a talent in itself. I wonder if we can make the sky darker. You can make it like sunset. <laughs> There's so much you can do in Lightroom. You can just totally change an image. Maybe contrast and exposure down. That looks kind of cool. I'm going to try and get rid of the the uh what's it called <laughs> the gradial filter here in the mountains as you can see it made it really dark because it's just a straight line so i'm just gonna erase that erase bring up the flow so it erases more maybe um oh come come say hello Come here. My cat just entered the room. My <laughs> cat entered the chat. Chicky, come. That's Evie, everyone. <laughs> uh, any suggestion to capture crisp pictures in raw format and which nickel lens would you recommend for wedding photography? I don't know about the nickel lenses because I don't use that. I use Canon lenses. Um, but for Chris pictures in raw format, I would say to practice uh, taking your time with getting focus and use a slightly higher aperture as well. So if you're like me and you like to shoot wide open at 1.4, but you find your photos aren't looking as crisp, then I would recommend to bring your aperture up to 3.5 or 2.8 and practice until you get those photos getting super sharp and once you're more comfortable and used to doing that then you can start bumping down your aperture should really be using a tablet for this but no <laughs> i erased too much i think this gradial filter is too much and i also messed it up I think I need to use a lower flow. You know, this is something that I only learned recently with Lightroom is that you can change the flow of the erase brush from a filter. So if you have it really low, it's kind of like, it works like a Photoshop brush at a low opacity. And then you can also have it at a hundred and it completely erases what you're brushing. 
And th this has been a lifesaver because I've needed this before in the past and I don't know why I've never noticed it before. So just in case there's anyone else out there like me, I thought I'd mention that because it kind of makes erasing things look a little bit more natural. You don't get like that super harsh line when you have it at 100. I'm ironing my husband's shirts and have this on as background noise. Your voice is so calming. Thank you. Yeah, I get a lot of comments of people asking me to do like ASMR videos and stuff like that. <laughs> kind of funny sorry for going off topic but how do you uh how do you do this amazing image quality in a live stream so we're using the sony a7 III as our video camera um and it's just connected via i think a hdmi cable and it's got we bought a little adapter thing so you can use it as a webcam from your computer and then i've got my favorite canon 35 1.4 as the lens you can use range mask, no erase. How do you do that? I need to learn landscape editing, you guys. Oh, range mask. Luminance. Oh, that's interesting. That's really cool. Thank you. <laughs> I think that looks pretty cool with the sky kind of reddish. Maybe I'll play around with the colors a little bit more. I feel like it's a bit too orange. Maybe like that's better. I'm pretty happy with that photo. I think it looks cool. I've used your LA presets for a fashion shoot and it's amazing. Is there any way to buy all your presets in a package? <laughs> ah, thank you. I'm really glad you like it. The LA presets like super vibrant and punchy. I really, um, yeah, I like it for like colorful photos. I think it looks really cool. Um, as for the package, there isn't a way to do that right now because I constantly add new presets. I don't want anyone missing out. If they buy a package like today and then in three months time there's like a bunch of new presets that they missed out on so the best way to do that is to add them well, all the ones that you want into your cart and then i've also got um what's it called discount codes as well so if you add like a whole bunch you can get 20 percent off or 10 percent off it's all on the home page of the lightroom presets so hopefully that helps Okay, let's move on to another photo. Um, I really like this one. This was taken on the Sony 28 uh, f2 lens. And the dynamic range on the Sony is insane. Oh, and then you brighten the photo and you're like, oh, it's not that good. <laughs> let's find another one. Maybe this one. This is another 28 lens. I had my shutter speed a little bit slow for this photo because we were driving really fast and the trees were quite big so they were close to me while I was taking the photos. There's a lot of motion blur in this photo, which sucks because it is really pretty. Like I love the mountain in the background. It's cool. But yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I love prime lenses, but considering a zoom try 24 to 70 2.8 or 24 105 f4 uh, i have the 24 to 70 2.8 but i have the mark one version which tends to miss focus quite a lot which is kind of strange for a canon lens but um yeah i find that just when a photo is supposed to be in focus it's just not which is really frustrating so i kind of stopped using it after a while because it just wasn't reliable um, but in saying that, I do like the range of the 24 to 70. It's got all my favorite prime lenses, prime focal lengths in there. So it's got the wide 24 or 35 look to it. And then it's got the 50 mil look as well. And then it's got something pretty close to an 85 too. And those are my three favorite portrait lenses. So I personally really like the 24 to 70. Kind of wish I waited and just grabbed the Mark II version, but I had already had the Mark I for like a couple of years before the second one came out.
<laughs> you just googled ASMR. I know it's kind of weird. Uh, isn't it weird how the aspect ratio shifts from JPEG to RAW? Yeah, I think it's also it's doing uh, the lens correction as well while I'm flicking through the photos. So I think the JPEG doesn't have lens correction and then the RAW does, maybe? But yeah, it is weird. Oh yeah, so yeah, the RAW has uh, lens correction enabled already. That's why it's like flipping. I mean, this one doesn't have as much motion blur. Maybe we should play with this. Shopping. All right, let's try and do something with this. <laughs> it looks like such a lame photo when you bring up the exposure. Maybe we should make it moody. Shadows, blacks. Okay, now let's do a little tone curve. Yeah, and this is super crooked as well, so I'm going to straighten it. Sorry, my computer's lagging a little bit because we're like live streaming at the same time. That looks kind of straight, probably. I usually, I try to find like a tree <laughs> in the background and that's what I base my uh, rotation thing on. So I'm using this tree as my anchor point. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so since I shot this through a car window, I find that, I can't remember if it does it in Australia, but every time we hire a car in America, the windows have a green tint to them. <laughs> so I'm just gonna bring the tint up to like the pinky area to try and balance that out just a little bit. And also bring up the temperature. And I think also I'm gonna add pink to the shadows here in uh, camera calibration. What happens if you copy the edits from the first picture and add them to another? It probably won't work since this is such a like specific edit for this photo. Um, so we can try, I'll sync it to that one. I mean, it looks okay. That's not too bad. I'd probably just lower the exposure of this one and bring up the white balance a bit and probably get rid of that split toning because it's adding like a weird purple hue to this photo. Yeah, that's not too bad. But then if I were to do that, if I were to copy these edits to something that was in a completely different spot, I don't think it would work. Yeah, it looks kind of yucky. <laughs> I think that's because, um, well, it's because the the photos are just like way too different in the color scheme that's in them, the lighting, uh, the lenses that they were shot on. And also sometimes when you really specifically edit for a particular photo, it doesn't always work across other shots as well. All right, this photo is really bad, but I'm going to try and do something to make it look nicer. That's going to be the challenge for right now. <laughs> so I think it needs uh, more contrast. It looks like it just looks really flat. So I'll bring down, I want like the edges to be darker, but the yellow trees to be brighter. So I'm going to bring up the midtones here. That's looking a bit better. It's a bit of a messy curve, but I'm going to make it work. Um, my editor at work thinks my best portraits come from the Yongnuo 100mm f2. I haven't tried any Yongnuo lenses, but I really wanted to because they've got some crazy budget like 35s and 50s. So it might be pretty fun to to use one of those for a video. 
Uh, for someone who's not planning on becoming a professional phot- photographer but really enjoys it, what photo editing software do you recommend purchasing? Um, it depends what kind of editing you like to do. If you only want to do these kind of raw adjustments, then Lightroom is really good. Um, and then also if you want to do more like retouching, uh, Photoshop is great as well. And Photoshop also comes with a program called Bridge, which also has a raw editor in it as well. And it has all the same, uh, settings that Lightroom does. The only thing it doesn't have is this manual transform to get rid of uh, like any distortion manually in your photo. I think that's the only thing Bridge doesn't have but aside from that it's a really really good photo editor as well. So I don't know with Photoshop you kind of get two in one but then I think Lightroom you have to get it on a subscription and if you only want Lightroom I think it's like ten dollars a month or something like that. Uh, yeah, but those are the two that I use mainly, so those are the ones I can recommend. Young Nuo, a terrible build quality. I had the 50 and it basically fell apart after two shoots. Damn, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, it would be interesting to see how it would hold up because I don't, I tend to shoot in quite (laughs) like harsh conditions. Um, like I don't really care if it's raining or snowing or anything like that, like I'll just shoot. Um, yeah, I'm surprised none of my other lenses have fallen apart. Are you making any money doing landscape photography at all? No, (laughs) no, landscape photography is really just for fun. I just do it when I'm traveling because I feel like it. Yeah, so I thought we'd practice editing some landscapes here on the stream. All right, let's add a color curve to this photo because it needs something like special. It's just so it's a boring photo. I have seen the abuses your lenses endure. I know. <laughs> uh, my poor lenses. You coming? Dan's going to join us now. He will be able to help me read through the questions so I can edit more so it's more entertaining. (laughs) When will be your next critique video? We're going to do a recording day next week on Monday, I think. I don't know, I have it in my calendar. So we're going to record the critique video then. What have we done? We are editing. This is a bad photo and I'm trying to do something with it in my room <laughs> to make it bad. better. I don't know, I don't like it. It's got like the motion blur here and it's a bit like muddy looking. Straight out of car window. <clears throat> yep. This is Dan, everyone. Hi. <laughs> I'm about to give up on this photo. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I don't know if you guys use both Lightroom and Bridge, but I find that Lightroom's tone curve is so touchy. It's super hard to do very, very minimal editing on it because the curve just tends to like fly away from you when you touch it. If you could pop it out and make it bigger, it would be handy. Yeah, but like it doesn't get any bigger. Nope. Like, come on, can I, please, please help me. It's annoying because like in Premiere and stuff, you can make it bigger, but not in Lightroom. Sorry, I'm just moving us. (laughs) Let me know before you're going to shift the order. (laughs) I really dig that photo. I'm a winter loving. Mm, I don't know what that word means, so I'm not going to say it. (laughs) Thank you. I'm glad you like this photo. I feel like it's gotten pretty far from where we started. Maybe I'm pushing the shadows too much. It'd be better with some... Oh, wait. I'll add the vignetting back in. Hide my failures. (laughs)
Okay, and then let's just do something with the yellow trees. Make them pop. Like, pretty much all my Colorado photos are like this. <laughs> Plus 100 on the yellow. It's just so pretty. We don't really have anywhere to go for, like, autumn trees here, do we? Maybe mm. in the Blue Mountains. There's, like, one section here in Australia. Mount Wilson with the maples. But driving through Colorado, just everything looked like this. It was insane. Yeah, like here it's all gardens. It's not side of the road for 100 kilometers or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Connect means Canadian. Ah, okay. Connect. That's okay. Oh, your mic's not working. Is it? Find out. <laughs> My computer's lagging so much. Uh, did you hear of Laowa 12 mil 2.8? Yeah. Is it for a full frame? Mm, pretty sure. I haven't heard of it, personally. Have you tried it? Do you like it? Hi from Colorado. I'm so jealous that you live there. <laughs> yeah, it's bucketing down snow now, eh? Yeah. I think it is. Mind if I do something? I believe my microphone isn't working. Oh, actually. okay. Ooh, you know what? I feel like the photo just came together when I darkened the sky a little bit and the mountain and made it a bit more blue. I like the photo now. <laughs> Have you done aerial slash drone photography? I have a drone, but um, I don't really use it that much because of the flying laws. Like, I'm not really sure where I'm allowed to fly it. And then I also need like an ND filter for it or something because the photos just look so digital from the drone. So yeah, I don't really know how to do that probably that's something I also want to practice <laughs> I guess like for me portrait photography and wedding photography are like my jobs and what I do to make a living and I absolutely love them so much and find them really really fun to do but I feel like landscape photography is kind of my hobby it's just like what I do when I'm traveling and maybe it doesn't always turn out perfectly but I just love playing around with it and um, experimenting and stuff like that Polar Pro makes great ND filters for drones. I'm going to have to have a they look. Because, yeah, that's I really want to do that. <clears throat> Did Evie go to sleep? No, she's running around. Mm. All right, let's have a look at a before and after. So this is the original photo out of the camera, and this is what it looks like with all the edits. I'm pretty happy with that. I feel like it came together. I think darkening the sky made like the biggest difference in this shot. Okay, what should we do next? Maybe this one. See, this is a shot where I should have used a bit of a higher aperture, <laughs> but because I'm Australian, I don't really know how to work with snow properly with photography. So the issue I had on the back of the camera, the shot looked great. It looked sharp in focus and I was really happy with it. Then when I downloaded the images and looked them on my computer, as you can see, uh, it auto focused on the snow because it was just really thick and the trees are slightly out of focus. Again, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I also took photos where I purposely focused even more on the snow and had the trees even more blurry in the back. So it's not that bad, but it's definitely something that I did that I'll remember next time I'm photographing in snow, uh, just to make sure to either manually focus on the, land, the far landscape or just use a higher aperture to try and avoid that from being out of focus in the future. <clears throat> 
Just joined here. Just want to say I love your content. Thank you. Can I ask where this photo was taken? This photo was in Colorado. I think it was called Woods Lake, maybe. I don't know, because we were just driving around and we were like looking on the map and just picking random places to visit that were close by to us. It was like a 20 minute dirt road to get there or something. Mm. Okay, let's sharpen the snowflakes. <laughs> Uh, you should have visited in California, especially San Diego, for beautiful sunsets. I've been to California a few times before and I love it there. The sunsets are incredible. I definitely agree with that. I think also in, in LA, like the smog really helps with that like beautiful sunset look for photos. All right, let's start with the curve for this one. What's she getting up to? I don't know. She was going crazy trying to catch a fly before. We can just hear Evie like running around in the house smashing into things. I think that's nice contrast for the shot. When it loads. I mean it's subtle but it's something. What time is it there? It's uh, 12.45. Midday. All right, that's cool. And I'll get rid of the vignetting because I definitely don't want that for this shot. I want it to be clean. I was like, did it do it? <laughs> what do you do, Dan? What do I do? I make videos. Is it straight? Come on, elaborate a little bit. <laughs> straight to the point, I make videos. <laughs> yeah, but what kind of videos? Well, I film all of Jules' YouTube videos I edit them there mm -hmm. um, I'm a wedding videographer by trade okay what colors are we gonna do with this I think we go like the typical route and make it like really blue that's what I'm envisioning I'm going to do that with the tone curve, I think. Make it look icy. That's what I... <laughs> that's what I want. Icy. Gold. Do you want me to read you some questions? Yeah, you ignored my question two times. Go find that question. Um, oh, there it is. Have you ever had crisis of creativity and how have you worked with it? Yeah, um, so at the moment I'm actually experiencing some kind of crazy creative burnout. This year has been like really crazy and I feel like this always happens to me towards the end of the year because like the finish line is so close and I like to be prepared and I always start thinking about what I'm going to do next year at the end of the year and then it makes me feel just really overwhelmed and I just get a creative block. So I'm experiencing that at the moment and for me what I like to do is I do fun stuff and things that don't have anything to do with what I do, <laughs> if that makes sense. So that's why I wanted to do the live stream today instead of making a video for tomorrow. So I really wanted to just like hang out with you guys, answer your questions and just talk to you and then at the same time. I wanted to edit landscape photos because that's the opposite of what I normally do with portrait photography. Um, and then I also like to spend time with my family and my friends. We go out to like dinner and lunch and I just talk. We also go on road trips, mm -hmm. just do like fun stuff and try not to think about it too much. I feel like when I just think and think and think and think, it just gets worse and I never get out of it. So yeah, for me, I just try and do different things to try and get out of my creative block. Sweeping and doing the dishes can be really good for easing blocks. I agree. Oh my God, we did the <laughs> biggest spring, spring cleaning yesterday and it was so like, you just feel so good afterwards. So yeah, I agree as well. <laughs> How to submit uh, for your critique. Uh, do I have the email here? Oh, I do. It's coming up. There we go. There you go. 
That's the email. So just uh, attach one to three photos that you want critiqued and I'll pick one if you're chosen um, and include your Instagram handle in the email as well so I can credit you if you're featured. I currently have like over a thousand emails sitting in that inbox. So unfortunately, as much as I would love to, I can't include everyone who submits a photo, but we do try and film as many parts as possible to try and include as many people as possible. But yeah, uh, submit your photos to that email. I don't know. I can never decide if I want to go realistic or not. What a choice. What a choice to make. Come one day to French Guiana in France. We will be too happy to welcome you. That's cool. I'm going to Google that place after. <laughs> I love traveling so much. What would you say is the best way to learn how to edit in Lightroom for a beginner? Um, I'm a very hands-on learner, so I need to do stuff in order to be able to learn. Um, so for me, I would probably watch like a few tutorials on like the basics of how Lightroom works and to see what you can do with it. And then once I kind of have my head wrapped around the basics, then I'll just go in and start experimenting with uh, like all the sliders and see how they affect the images and practice 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 yeah practice makes perfect <laughs> it does though what do you choose between 5d mark 4 and an a7 III? i can't choose <laughs> um at the moment i'm obsessed with the a7 III just because my life changed when we went to colorado Having only that camera and being able to film the vlogs that I shared with you guys and take all the photos that I took with one little tiny camera was just life changing. <laughs> it was so good because I mentioned this uh, like before, but I used to travel with the Sony a7S Mark One, which is great for video, but not that great for photo. Like it doesn't autofocus that well, like little things like that. So I'd have that camera and my Canon 5D Mark III. It was just too much. So yeah, it's revolutionized the way I work. <laughs> well, getting rid of the weight alone of Canon while traveling. Yeah. Is worth it. Mm-hmm. And it's only having two SD cards and a bigger battery now. Yeah, the battery thing was great as well. Like one battery gets you through the whole day. Even Canon can't do that. No. Nah. It got me through like almost two days once. When we were on the trip, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I haven't changed my battery in a while. So it's really weird editing a photo that doesn't have a lot of color in it. Like this is almost black and white. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Yeah, let's add some purplies to the <laughs> purplies <laughs> to the shadows. And maybe like a light, like a cyan. Cyan. Do you only use Canon? I use Micro Four Thirds Panasonic 45mm 1.8 for travel because me and my girlfriend often travel to places that you don't want to show off your 6D, like Brazil and North Africa. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. I went to Argentina uh, a couple of years ago and I ended up only taking the Sony A7S Mark One, mm -hmm. the Mark One, yeah. With the 28. And yeah, the Sony 28 F2 because it's like together, it kind of looks like nothing and i remember walking into and like the a7s is all scratched up and like yeah we odd. even like use texture to mark out a lot of like the white um branding and markings on it and stuff like that so it looked like crap like it was terrible and i remember walking into a shop one day because i went with my dad and we were just like looking around and the lady who worked there looked at my camera and she was like oh is that is that a toy <laughs> Yes, and I yes was like, it is. Yeah. <laughs> but it was nice to see that they, like, yeah, they were like, oh, that looks like crap. Yeah. <laughs> and they agreed. So, yeah, that um, that's also another good thing about the a7 III because it's not much bigger or anything than the a7S. So I would do the same thing if I – because I really want to go back to Argentina with Dan because my family is from there. So I would do the exact same thing again because it worked out all good. I can destroy the A7 III in about a month. <laughs> okay. The top part was looking a bit bright, so I added a 
gradient to kind of darken the highlights a little bit. They were just too like stark white. And then I'm also seeing like here, there's quite a dark kind of shadow on this edge of the image too. So I might brighten it because I want it to just look quite like clean all, all together. Would love to see you using off camera flashes and strobes or night portrait photography. Have we done a, no we haven't. No. No flashes. Though. No we haven't. Uh, that's another thing I want to do next year. I was actually thinking in Poland we might do some studio photo shoots because we're going there in March. We've been there in March before and it's really cold. At least for oh, us. It's not that cold. I was wearing like a jumper and a coat and like layers. Donkeys don't have layers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's wearing layers. It was like cold. So um, yeah, I'll probably do some studio shoots with models there. Even though I don't have any of my lighting with me, but we'll figure something out. Okay, I'm going to do a... What's this called again? The brush adjustment brush. Don't use autofocus today. 7S is actually one of my favorite cameras for photography. That's the same as me. Mm. Yeah, Dan's the same. I only manual focus on that. It's the only, like, because it's a smaller, um, it's less megapixel sensor, landscapes do come out a bit softer than compared to like a 5D or an A7 III. Mm -hmm. But I like it. A bit too soft for Jules. Yeah. It was minus 27 here last night. Were you talking Celsius or Fahrenheit? Damn. I feel like Celsius, right? I don't know. I always forget how it works. Same. Um, oh, I had another story. <laughs> um, so, as I was saying, when we went to Argentina with the Sony A7S, it's not that great at focusing. And I also, by accident, had it on continuous autofocus <laughs> in photo mode. So every time I gave the camera to my dad to take a photo of me, it would breathe focus like in and out constantly. It would the like time never was. stop um, while he was trying to take photos. And he just kept telling me that I need to return the camera because it's broken. <laughs> I need to get a new one. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that was kind of funny and also annoying. Celsius. I hope it wasn't windy. If it wasn't windy, uh, it's not too bad. But if it was windy, that would be... Yeah. That's hell frozen over. It was like 17 here yesterday and I was freezing. Not yesterday, the other week. And I was freezing. That looks cool. What do you guys think of this one? I'm back in a second. Celsius, no. where Commonwealth is. <laughs> uh, check them what you I'm going to travel soon to Phil's, uh, I'm assuming Philippines, and was wondering how you shoot your B-roll. By the way, I love the travel video. I love the travel video that Dan put together as well. It was so good. It's really, like, exciting to get to see your trip in like all the best moments put together. It's really fun. Oh, hey Manny, how's it going? I've been loving all your videos recently, by the way. I love all your, how you're getting all these different lenses to test with, they're super fun to watch. Winter here in Manitoba is brutal and I love it. <laughs> I think I love the snow as well, but I think I like it in small doses. So being in Colorado while it was snowing was super fun, but I was also really happy to be able to fly home back to where it was warm again afterwards. Um, oh, also, we'll answer the B-roll when Dan comes back. I don't know what Evie's doing. She's just catching on the fly she let him. Oh, nice. Hey. We'd love to see a live stream of one of your portrait shoots. Maybe we could do that when we do an indoor session, like a live stream of a shoot. Mm -hmm. That would be fun. Someone was asking, how do you shoot your B-roll? Because they love the travel video. How do I shoot it? Fire, fire, fire. 
Uh, with a nice of this. And, um, primes. <laughs> How? <laughs> what do you want to know? Like, specifics. Oh, let's do the half dome. Your simity. I could definitely do Australia come January. That's when it's like the hottest here. Yeah, you don't want to be here in January. Especially after like minus 27. Then you come to like a 40 degree. Plus, plus 45, yeah. 45, the storms roll in every afternoon. Yeah. It gets annoying. really humid. Really dry during the day, then really humid in the afternoon. I mean, it's cool. Yeah. Some people like the heat. You should do streaming sometime. <laughs> I am streaming. <laughs> <laughs> it's been pretty amazing how much you've grown on this platform so far. Thank you. Been putting in the work this year, though. Oh, yeah, I have an update to tell you guys. Uh, next year, we're going to be uploading videos once a week, every Wednesday. Um, just because two a week has been a lot to keep up with. Mm -hmm. Like, it was great, like, during the beginning and middle of the year. But right now, we're in the middle of wedding season. So it's been, like, intense, like, keeping up with making videos and stuff like that. And I also, like, I don't want to make videos for the sake of just having to upload on Saturday or whatever. So I really want my videos to be educational and helpful and entertaining. So I don't want to like rush things that could be done better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, next year it's going to be every Wednesday. Thanks, Manny. I appreciate it. Uh, generally curious, do you shoot mainly manual AV or TV mode? I always shoot in manual. Yes. TV mode. I don't know. <laughs> is that shut up priority? I don't know. A AV is sh aperture priority. Um, yeah, I have a video about how to shoot in manual mode made really, really easy on my channel. I'm going to make an updated version because that was like one of the first videos we ever recorded. Do you remember? Yeah, that was last year. Yeah. And I sucked at talking to the camera. Oh my God. If you guys could see the raw footage of that video. <laughs> It was terrible. We were in Poland at the time. Oh, uh, we also had planes flying overhead every, and, yes, every like, every 90 seconds. <laughs> so annoying. Um, but yeah, we were in Poland, and we decided to film it outside, and it was, like, close to sunset. So when we started, it was really, really bright, and then by the time we finished the video, it was practically nighttime. <laughs> That's how long it took me to just get the words out. It's really hard talking to a camera. My god, look at the dynamic range on this. Are you joking? Sony. Are you joking? <laughs> you should do one upload a week and sprinkle in some lives more so you can work on your wedding edits and we can get our video fixed. Yeah, well that's <laughs> I really want to do that cuz I also feel like we don't live stream enough and it's it's there's like a little fly flying around. <laughs> can you see it? Evie. Um, yeah, so we don't end up streaming enough because we're just so busy with mm. work and then making two videos a week. So, yeah, we really want to li live stream more next year. Um, that shadow recovery is insane. And it's, like, still really high quality. It's not, um, like, pixelated and there's no weird color cast. And, like, our other issue with the live streaming thing was with Saturday <laughs> uploads, it's 10.30 p.m. here. Mm -hmm. And we're usually coming back from work or whatever mm -hmm. like live streaming on a saturday doesn't work yeah for us fridays are good though yeah. like is this a good time for you guys i guess any general tips for shooting b-roll i'm pretty new to videography like i guess like camera movement like do you do special camera movements or it's all in the legs it is actually you should see dan when he's filming um, well, like, everyone's got a different style. Um, I guess depending on what glass you shoot, um, 
getting close. Um, if you're shooting um, on a wide lens, get wide shots, but don't forget to get close-up shots of things as well. Um, yeah, that's a really good tip, actually, to get a variety of far away, mid, and close-up shots. Cause I feel even like, if you're on one lens, like even yeah. if it's just like a 24 or a 35 or whatever, like don't forget to, to take a few steps back and take a few steps in, um, get the shot from more than one angle. Um, if you're shooting on like a 50 or an 85, something more cropped in, your movement is a lot different. You can't, um, like you can't walk and shoot as easily, um, especially if it's not stabilized, um, which goes back to it's all in the legs. Yeah, I remember um, with the shooting things at different like distances, um, I've tried to put together some travel films before, like when Dan wasn't with me to use his expertise on filming. And I realized that I missed out on getting close up shots of every of a few things here and there. So when I put my travel film together, it was just, I don't know, it ends up not being that engaging because you don't have the close ups to break apart the further away shots. Yeah, no, when you said that, I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's the tip. The tip. The tip. You want to read up some more questions? Um, oh. I have some difficult using manual focus on getting the perfect focus. Then I use lots of time autofocus. Do you have some ideas to help me? Um, In video or photo? Not sure. That's a different question. Wait, where? Oh, this yeah. one here. Mm -hmm. um, I personally like to use autofocus because I shoot with a shallow depth of field. Um, you can't see, I think the maximum you can see in the viewfinder 2. is 2.8. .8. So if you shoot with anything, let's if you're, on a, if you're on a DSLR, then your, your viewfinder is only 2.8. So if you're shooting at 1.4, you can't see focus properly. Mm hmm. So that's why I always shoot with autofocus, just because you physically can't get uh, manual focus with a shallow depth of field. Uh, so my tip is, if you're shooting with a wider aperture than f2.8, then use autofocus to make sure it gets it in focus. Otherwise, if you're shooting with 2.8 and above, um, with autofocus, I don't have much experience with manual. I would definitely choose a focus point of what you want to be in focus of the photo and put your focus point on that and that would make it easier to focus did i answer the question i feel like I you just... lost me <laughs> <laughs> also kong's here oh kong hey kong get back to work <laughs> <laughs> okay let how's me... your day going kong <laughs> okay let me try again with the autofocus. So if there's something you want in focus on a photo, so someone's face, I would put the focus point on their face. So a lot of the time, if you leave the focus point in the middle and then focus and recompose your shot, it's going to slip. It can slip out of focus because you're moving your camera. So the distance becomes different. So yeah, definitely move your focus point and also put your focus point in a point of contrast. That'll help speed up the autofocus. So instead of like, if you, you're getting like a close up shots of someone's face, instead of putting the focus point like on their forehead, since it's all just one solid color, I would put it on their eye or their eyebrow because it's kind of like a contrasting color. That explains perfectly. Yay. I redeemed myself. Okay. Let's fix the colors in this. Does the straw have one hole or two? It has two holes in one tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you always expose for highlights in most of your landscape shots or was this just personal preference for this particular shot? Yeah, I usually expose for highlights. I find that shadows are easier to recover in photos, in raw photos, than highlights. She's Evie's like There's going crazy out there. Yeah, so I usually expose for the highlights. So that's the original uh, expose for like the top of the mountain. A 
I feel like I've almost recovered too much, too much shadows, too many shadows, <laughs> too many shadows. Too much. Too I many. recovered five too many. I might darken it. A little bit. Yeah, it's only like plus a hundred. Fine. I'll see if there's any questions we missed. Ooh, that looks cool. Red. Kind of want the trees to be like more desaturated in this shot so the mountain stands out a little bit more. I feel like also the sky could be darker. Are you planning to do a live stream on portrait editing as well? Yeah, we could do that. That'd be fun. Maybe maybe we can do either an end of year live stream to like wrap it all up or a beginning of the year live stream to start it all up. <laughs> Both. Why not both? Mm, we can do both. Maybe yeah, I can like grab some portraits and we can edit. That would be fun. If you have an electronic viewfinder and shit raw, increase the contrast and it will sharpen up the viewfinder image better than peaking. Yeah, nice. that works. Oh, I like that with like the orange shadows in this shot. It like the green ties a little bit more into the mountain. I was feeling like the mountain looks really separated from the greens. That looks a bit better. Would you guide us through your thought process while adjusting the points in the tone curve? Um, I actually just released a video about how to edit with the tone curve. And I feel like it explains that a lot better than I would here. Um, but basically, you've got your blacks down here and then your shadows your midtones your whites and your highlights going in that order and you kind of want to create an s shape with your curve and keep the curve looking as smooth as possible to add contrast into your image um, but yeah if you want to watch the video it explains it a lot better and goes into more detail speaking of let's try and do a blue curve on this shot i feel like editing the colors with the tone curve uh, can really help tie the image together because it kind of applies the filter over the entire photo like ties it all up and it's like too vibrant this image is going to be awesome <laughs> Uh, undecided between a7 III and 5D Mark IV, but I'm leaning towards Sony. Yeah, if I had to start all over again, <laughs> I feel like I would definitely get a complete Sony kit, to be honest. Literally, just because of the size and weight, and also the shadow recovery, I'm just so impressed by like what it looks like. If I had shot this image on Canon, the shadows, if you recover them... They will recover, but they look... They will be noisy. Yeah, they look really low quality, like quite noisy, not as sharp. And it really changes the color of whatever you recovered to really, really green. And it's super hard to edit that out with Lightroom. You have to then go into Photoshop and it's this whole thing. Uh, yeah, so I feel like I would personally go for Sony. I don't know. And like Sony mirrorless now has enough lenses. to Like you've got the 24, the 35... The 50, the 58, the 85. Mm -hmm. It's like covers everything. Yeah. Yeah, I might have to start getting some Sony lenses. I mean, in saying that, I still love the Canon 5D Mark IV. It's like the camera I started out with. I started on the, on the Mark II. Like that was my first professional DSLR. So it has a soft spot in my heart. I love the way it works. It feels really ergonomic and easy to use in my hands. Um, when we don't have to think about anything when using it. Like yeah, it's, it's all, like second it's nature. Memory. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty happy with this shot. What do you guys reckon? Score it 1 to 10. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> zero, zero, zero. What do you think of the ergonomics of Sony bodies? They're good. 
it's pretty good. The The thing that I find is that the Sony menu, yeah, it's huge. Um, but I feel like you only really have to go through it a few times in the physically. beginning. Oh. Yeah, it's good physically. <laughs> the menu was... Well, most people don't like the menu system. I like it. Well, if you didn't interrupt me, I would have Keep said... <laughs> 11, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so the menu system is quite long and confusing and whatever, but I feel like you only really go through it a few times towards the beginning of when you first start owning the camera. And you basically grab all the things that you use on a regular basis and you create shortcuts with them with the buttons that are on the back of the camera. So eventually you really only need to go into the menu to format your cards, which you can memorize where it is. Like that's not mm -hmm. an issue. And if you want to do anything like, like change the S that like something crop strange, or yeah. Something like that, yeah. Which you would do quite rarely, like just to experiment or whatever. And with the Mark Threes, now you you've got practically everything can be assigned to a shortcut. Because mm -hmm. on like the A7S one and on the Mark Twos you couldn't assign everything and you didn't have enough buttons. Now you do, you've got the joystick as well and all that. But mm -hmm. um, you can pretty much reach anything without having to go into the menu now. So menu wise, they fixed it. Ergonomically, holding it. Holding it feels good. I've got quite like big hands and it's not too much of an issue for me to hold it. Maybe. Um, the only thing I can think of is that I don't really like where the record button is on the A7 III. I feel like, because I have, it's like right, almost underneath the viewfinder to the right hand side. So it kind of like shakes the entire camera when I press record. But on the Sony A7S Mark One and Two, it's just like right under your thumb from where you hold it. That's a bit controversial because people like the new one and I don't. <laughs> where the record button is. Neither do I. Hmm. I think it's force of habit for us as well, though. Maybe. But I much prefer <laughs> where it was on one and two. Yeah, I prefer it as well. I just now it's like... where the Canon one is. Yeah, I just always feel like it's so awkward. Like you have to move your whole hand to like go right. and press it, yeah, and then the whole like right beginning of the clip under shakes. the viewfinder and. Yeah. I liked the original crappy button. Yeah, same. <laughs> Everyone would disagree on that. Yeah. Just like me saying I like the Sony menu. Yeah, Everyone I do. I disagree with that as well. I'm good. <laughs> um, just bought the Amalfi and Aspen kit. Cheers. Yay. Thank you so much. I really hope you like it. They're two very good uh, all-rounder presets, in my opinion. Evie, come. She's going crazy. She's got too much energy. <laughs> um... I have a Sigma Art 51.4 and use a Nikon uh, D7200 and at the beginning of my latest session my lens wasn't grabbing focus on the subject even when my focus point was on his eye I was shooting at f2.2 does that sound like a calibration issue yeah yeah I mean it also though depends on the lighting if you were shooting backlit so if you had the sun behind your subject and you were shooting into the sun then uh, lenses and cameras tend to have issues with focusing but if there wasn't any backlight it was just quite even easy to focus in lighting then it does sound like a calibration issue possibly she just wants treats you should do that on camera we taught her how to high five <laughs> Evie. come here come here did that mask Easy. Come. do something I've been trying to... Oh, okay, that's why. Let's bring it down. See uh, it? See it? High five. You'll get it when you... Stay with you. High five. Don't reach for the treats. There we go. Good girl. High five. I think it masked out the, um, the half dome. Let's go really extreme and see what that looks like. I've never used the um, the range mask before. Someone mentioned it earlier. <laughs> Good girl. 
Okay. I'm Outski, but this was my first live stream chat. Thanks, Julia and Dan. Yeah, thanks so much for joining. It was fun talking to you. And have fun in freezing cold Canada. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, yeah. Okay, that range mask definitely worked really well on this photo. I think because the sky is just like a solid color. You're probably the only two people who ever to disagree with the record button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's why we're together. <laughs> okay. Do you guys see this little precious high-fiving for her treats? She'll do anything for food. I I'll switch the record button to the shutter button right away on my Sony A7 III. Oh. Uh, I don't like that either. <laughs> <laughs> I like the original button. I just want to where it was. Well, that and I like my wooden grip, like external button. Oh, yeah. Dan has like a whole grip. You want to show them? Maybe. You guys should see what Dan films my behind the scene videos on. Okay. It's a beast. Still got 20 more trees to get through. <laughs> Um, how do you avoid the tips of the trees getting blue and dark when using the gradient tool in the sky? Uh, to be honest, I usually don't <laughs> like, I just try and not underexpose too much that you can see it on the trees. But, uh, someone mentioned in the chat to use the range mask to be able to, uh, only affect certain parts of the image. I don't know exactly how it works yet. I'm going to play around a lot more with it in the next week. Cause that's a really interesting tool. But yeah, I think, um, as you can see, I pulled the mask up. So I think the red part is what the gradient tool is affecting. Um, so it's affecting the like the highlights of the image. I think that's what that means if I pull the range all the way up. And then if you pull the range like back down, that's the entire gradient tool that it's affecting. So in that case, you would be able to see it on the trees. But then as you pull it up, this is a cool tool. A <laughs> cool tool. Yeah. So I guess that's how you don't get it to affect the trees. Oh, I should get rid of it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I just learned that today. That's super helpful. Does your cat know how to click the shutter? No, she doesn't. We should teach her that next. <laughs> hey, then I'm out of a job. <laughs> When we have like the tripod set up in the office to film our office videos here, she likes to go she up monitors. and sit on the camera. It's kind of cute. She's very naughty. She does everything like whatever she wants. <laughs> She's good. Okay, they're all gone. I shoot real estate and events, so I have two very different needs and settings. A7 II is near impossible to use between two jobs. A7 III is much better with my menu option. Mm. Yeah, I feel like... Yeah, with every new version of a Sony camera that was released, they just upgraded so many great things. But I feel like the A7S is a very predominantly video camera, whereas the A7 III is more a little bit of everything. Like, it's good at video, it's good at photo. I've lost my check. <laughs> they can't see it, can they? No. I would just stand. It's okay. All right. I am very happy with this edit. Especially with that new range mask in the gradient tool. That is so helpful. Okay, let's do this one. Anyone bought 1.8 lens instead of 1.4 because of the weight? Which lens? Yeah, I guess it depends which focal length. Does someone already asked 85 or 35? Uh, I feel like there's actually a, a bigger difference between the L series and the one below it. Like, I feel like the one point, like, for example, the only one I would know of is the 50 mil 1.4 and 1.8. I feel like they're both pretty similar in size and weight. Mm, I think the autofocus is very different between the two, though. No, it's just size and weight. Ah, oh, size and weight. 
Yeah, size and weight. Yeah, size and weight. L series always. Yeah, one point four and one point eight were like kind of similar. Both pretty light. Both pretty small. But the one point two, that's a beast. It's like mm-hmm. a brick. Okay, I think this will be the last photo that we edit for the live stream because we've been up for like two hours. Oh, hour and a half. Hour and a half. Hour and a half. Okay. Oh yeah, from twelve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I think this one will be fun because it's like colorful and we've got the reflection and the highlights. <laughs> okay. Sharpen. Sony is starting to become relatively affordable now that Canon, Nikon and Panasonic have announced their full frame mirrorless and the cost is upwards of 4K. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. It's good. It's good that Canon and, and Nikon have released mirrorless finally because it does mean that sony is gonna push even harder yeah and they're already dominating so we're gonna get good glass hopefully between the more products will be released on a quicker schedule mm-hmm. so it's good competition's always good yeah I'm really excited to see like what happens now with Sony that Canon and Nikon have started uh, releasing their uh, mirrorless. Let's say what's the word. This is very. Canon and Nikon have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, definitely. And Sony's not exactly worried. Like they haven't even released. They haven't even announced a 7S3 yet, which should have been announced in October in September or October yeah it's like they're not rushing it they just want it to be good and they don't really care for the the competition Mm. because like absolutely everyone would have been happy if an a7s3 dropped and nothing got changed except for the battery and SD card everyone would be happy Mm -hmm. that's all it would take but they've got something up their sleeve with this one so it's good Sony bodies are reasonable. Sony glasses were overpriced. Um, most of the Sony glasses are overpriced. I can agree on that. Yeah. You gotta, That's like, why I've put it off for so long. I still haven't gotten a Sony lens. But, like, for instance, like, the Sony 35 1.4, it's cheaper than a Canon 35 1.4. Like, so, some glass is more expensive. Like, I think they're 24 to 70. They're 70 to 200. Those are expensive. Mm-hmm. Like the the G Master zooms and stuff, like they're way more expensive than what they should be at. But um, yeah, some of it's alright. I think this needs like a golden highlight. I'm like, can you say hey everyone? Hey everyone! <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird. It's like a button. Hey everyone! <laughs> cool I don't know what else to do to this photo kind of like it really warm For me, I think my favorite tool to use is the tone curve. It makes the biggest difference in a photo. Nice edit, by the way. Thank you. Uh, Invest in 1.4 Sony lens or buy a 1.8 lens. (laughs) Again, depends what lens. Like every, every lens, every focal length has different um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uses or pros and cons? Like pros and cons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I guess it depends, like, yeah, what lens you're after and what you want to use it for as well. Like Canon's, what's the 85 under the, the non-L series 85? 1.8, I think. 1.8? 1.8. Or 2. No, 1.4 or 1.8. 1.8. 1.8 then, yeah. That 85, I know a lot of people that prefer it over the 85 1.2 L series. And that one's not L series. Way cheaper. Gets a, autofocus, works well on it. Mm-hmm. Like that one, that's, that one's always been a good competitor. Mm-hmm. 
But then, like, the 51.4 compared to the 51.2, in my opinion, or series there, it's, like, night and day difference. Yeah, so I it, agree. Every lens is different. Trying to make the um the greens in the tree look a little bit more lush. 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 So I'm bringing the hue of the yellows up because it makes the greens look nice and like foresty. Don't copy or anything? No, I'm good, thank you. California native loves seeing Yosemite from an Australian point of view. <laughs> uh, I would that would be so cool to just be able to go to Yosemite for like the weekend. I would love that. That sunlight is awesome. Yeah, it's super pretty. I love the uh, the backlight on these two trees, and then the mountain back here is so pretty. I love it. <laughs> I feel like Yosemite is just like such a beautiful place that you could literally walk around with your eyes closed pressing the shutter and you would get really pretty photos sony's nifty 50 is horrendous 275 dollars for a noisy plastic lens and there's no middle range option like nikon and canon zeiss 55 1.8 and sony 50 1.4 is super expensive i heard I think it's the Zeiss 55 that I've heard amazing reviews about. <clears throat> what settings do you save when you make presets in Lightroom? <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, it depends what the preset looks like, but most of the time I save everything except for these gradient filters and adjustment brush and stuff like that because this stuff here is very specific to the photo that you're editing. Um, and then Sometimes, again, depending on the preset, I won't save the temperature and the tint because that's very dependent on what white balance you shoot in and stuff like that. But yeah, the majority of the time, just everything except for the um, adjustment brushes and gradient filter and stuff. Ooh, I'm happy with this. Do you like it? My hey. throat's making noises. <coughs> yeah. Looks good. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed today's live stream. We have to get on here more often. Should we do, what should we do next time? Do you want me to do something similar where maybe we can do portrait editing? I can grab like maybe five or something different portraits and we can edit them in Lightroom like we did with these landscape photos. We can do that or we could do anything you guys want <laughs> uh, should I get the Sony a7 II or the a6500 I'll be using a Canon lens adapter I've never used the 6500 before I have I'd, I'd be going for the a7 II probably yeah well you got full frame for roughly this like the price difference on an a7 II and an a6500 now it's not a huge difference, I don't think. Because mm. I've seen the A7 too, they've been selling it really cheap since the 3 came out. Um, and you got full frame at that point. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You've got the option you of go full, with a frame full frame or crop compared to the 6500, which is stuck on crop. Yeah. And um, the Sony A7 II, uh, from my experience, works pretty well adapted with Canon lenses. I used the... Um, the Canon 50mm 1.2 worked really well on it, and the Canon 35 1.4 as well. So I was really happy with that. Mm. Yeah, Metaburn's 4 or 5, mm -hmm. both of them, because they run the same firmware, they work exactly the same, the Metaburn's 5, or the only difference is the button that you've got on it, mm -hmm. really. Um, both of them work really well on the A7 II, mm -hmm. which was quite surprising. We expected worse than what yeah, we got. Yeah, we did, but it was great. Okay, you guys are voting for both a uh, live critique and portrait editing. Maybe, maybe what we can do is the end of year live stream can be a live critique and then the beginning of year live stream can be portrait editing. How about that? Hmm. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll do that. 
Kung's voting for a live behind the scenes. Well, we gotta wait till Poland for that. We gotta wait until there's better the internet. <laughs> yeah, and then. Hence Poland. <laughs> Good internet. But yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for joining in on the stream. I had a lot of fun editing photos with you guys. I learned about the range mask in the gradient tool, which is <laughs> awesome. And yeah, it's just really fun to answer your questions and talk to you guys. But yeah, I hope you guys have a really awesome uh, rest of your day. And I'll see you guys all soon. We'll do a live critique probably next. Sounds good. Yep. Have a good day. Yep. Or night. Or morning. Or whatever it is, wherever it is. Afternoon. Whatever. <laughs> good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> Dan needs to be a regular. I agree. I am a regular. You went here last time for the live stream. Yeah, last time I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye. See ya.